Hi, Mom. Yeah. No, can you pick up Chris after school? Yeah, I'm at, I'm at the doctor's. Mrs. Harris? Describe your symptoms. H hang on. Stress, headaches, nausea. Well, I work on Saturdays. And how long has this been? Equanimity. Balance your lifestyle. Good morning, Dr. Cosman. Thank you for joining me here in Dallas, Texas, to talk about the EstroPro study. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. My pleasure. I'd love to hear the details of it because I think it's a fascinating study. Uh, well, I, I, I would love to share them with you. All right, then. Well, let's do it. My audience wants to know, what is EstroPro? First of all, they ask me. <laughs> okay. Osteoporosis is a, is a disease which makes the bones weak and they can break or fracture easily uh, just with a fall from standing height or banging into a piece of furniture. And these fractures have consequences for us. Uh, they cause pain, of course. Sometimes they require surgery to fix them. Uh, but they can also produce uh, deformity and chronic pain and loss of independence and uh, even sometimes an, an earlier uh, loss of life. Okay. And I'm sorry, I mixed the uh, title up. It is osteoporosis, not estopro. I don't, I'm, that's my last interview. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Osteoporosis. How many women, is it, it, is it a disease that affects more women than men or equally? Uh, it does affect more women than men, although men are also at risk. Uh, about one in every two women will have an osteoporosis-related fracture at some point in her lifetime, and about one in four men will have an osteoporosis-related fracture. So about half as common uh, in men, but obviously very common in both genders. Okay, I got to ask this before we even get started. Is there anything to prevent it? Uh, well, you know, sometimes your genes uh, put you in a, in a risk category where there's almost nothing you can do. Uh, but many times, uh, certainly uh, following a healthy lifestyle uh, is likely to help uh, either prevent or at least reduce the worsening of it. And that involves uh, a good, healthy diet, lots of fruits and vegetables, calcium and vitamin D rich, uh, a good amount of exercise, both aerobic on your feet and strength training, uh, stopping smoking, not drinking too much, and then, of course, getting the appropriate diagnostic tests when you need it. So for women at menopause, for example, they should talk to their health care providers uh, about whether they need a bone density test uh, to determine uh, if the bone density is low uh, and or puts them in the category of osteoporosis where treatment might be needed. Dr. Felicia Cosman, she's a Columbia University professor and the JAMA study investigator. What else do we need to know about uh, osteoporosis as related to this study? Uh, okay, well, this study was a landmark clinical trial in some 2,460 women with osteoporosis, and they received either this new investigational medication called the baloparatide or a placebo or another leading uh, competitive compound that's currently on the market. Uh, and uh, in the study, we showed that a baloparatide could stimulate the growth of bone tissue and improve bone mass very quickly and very substantially throughout the skeleton. And as a result of that, the bone got stronger uh, and the number of fractures that women in this uh, investigational abaloparatide arm had uh, was substantially reduced in both the spine and all non-spine fractures. So this represents a really hopeful uh, and exciting new time for women uh, women with osteoporosis. You know, osteoporosis is like many diseases. You don't, I think you don't know it until you either are investigated or you find out you have it. So people don't uh, uh, plan for it. They don't uh, uh, make their lifestyle accommodating. That's My question, 
I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say that's absolutely right, Fowler, and there are really no symptoms that you have. It's kind of like blood pressure. You know, you don't feel it until you have a stroke. You don't feel high cholesterol until you have a heart attack. And with osteoporosis, you don't feel that until you have a bone attack or a, a fracture, a, a bone failure as a result of the osteoporosis. But of course, the best thing is to try to find out if you're at risk and then to take appropriate steps to reduce the risk of the complications if you do have the disease before those complications occur. That's what we'd love to do uh, in the field of osteoporosis. With osteoporosis, why are we going public about it? Because you know it's considered an old, old person's disease. Uh, well, you know, some people call it a pediatric disease because, in fact, uh, your genetic makeup, which you're born with, obviously, is something that predetermines to a large extent what your bone density is going to be. So, in fact, you kind of are born with the uh, predisposition uh, to have osteoporosis or not. Uh, and uh, all along the course of our lives, we can at least, uh, you know, use the uh, measures that we know uh, can help prevent uh, further deterioration, as we've outlined, uh, in terms of nutrition and exercise and healthy lifestyle. Uh, but absolutely, like other chronic diseases, most of the manifestations occur uh, when we're quite a bit older. Uh, and uh, we need to, uh, at that stage, make sure that we are identifying the people at highest risk and making the appropriate uh, steps, targeting those individuals for treatment if it's necessary uh, to prevent complications. Okay, so we're in a new revolution here. This is according to Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon.com. I saw him at a conference, and he said we're in a, a new revolution, technology, medicine, and personal responsibility. What is the personal responsibility connected with the, the survey, if you can, that we need to do in order to either live with this disease or to stave it off? Well, we need to reinvigorate the interest of both the public and healthcare providers uh, in recognizing the importance of osteoporosis. You know, this not only exerts its personal toll on individuals who have fractures uh, and all the complications, as we've talked about, but also our uh, public health dollars. Uh, we're spending huge amounts of money uh, to take care of patients after fractures, especially after some of the fractures like those of the hip, where uh, uh, many people never uh, get out of the hospital, end up in nursing homes. And so uh, we, we need to uh, reinvigorate this whole field uh, and make sure that we are uh, choosing the patients who really need to be treated and giving them the appropriate therapies in order to save our uh, public health uh, dollars uh, and to save individuals from uh, a dramatic compromise in uh, their quality and quantity of lives. It's all preventable. Dr. Cosman, this is a fascinating study. I'm so glad that it was conducted. If there's a place to send my audience on the web, because my audience is baby boomers, and I know this has something to do with our lives, where you would bet. you... Yes, absolutely. It's the National Osteoporosis Foundation's website. It's nof.org. Dr. Cosman, this is fascinating, and you seem to have a fascinating job. Thank you for coming on the Valder BB Show. My pleasure, Valder. Thank you very much.